So I definitely wouldn't have thought that a year ago I would have been in this situation. Making pots with my daughter in the cellar, running a business with my daughter selling pots. We're both actually fairly aware of what our skills are that we bring to it. You know, he's had this skill that's been going on for ages and only recently has he been able to kind of share it with someone and he really enjoys sort of doing that. So I think when lockdown came around in March um, and things were changing very rapidly, I was still at uni and then suddenly I was back home. During lockdown, my daughter had thought that she was going to go travelling for that year and she was mooning around the house looking lost and all of a sudden she had a bright idea that she would get me to teach her pottery using the equipment I've got down in my cellar. It was a really nice opportunity to spend a lot of time honed in on a certain skill. So my dad used to be a production thrower down south and so we've had all the equipment down in our cellar for 20 plus years and it meant that when I came along to learn with it, I was very fortunate to have everything around me. I had my dad as my teacher, and luckily we do get on really well. So I learned to do pottery because of my dad. He went to evening class. I worked as a potter, and then Caitlin learned from me. It was quite interesting because we were talking about this together, and she said she felt that she really wanted to get some of the skills that I have and have them so that they, she could pass them along to her kids perhaps and that it wouldn't just die with me. So a lot of our designs um, when we first started out varied about kind of what I see day to day. So um, I'm a big lover of the sea and I'm a big lover of Scotland and we have always been over to the um, Scottish Isles like Isla and Jura. They're just absolutely stunning and I think that a lot of our inspiration for our names and the kind of way we've designed our, our um, ceramics is surrounded by Scottish nature. So we've got a few called Summer Isles and the Misty Isles, depending on the colours. And we've got one called a Wee Coo, um, because it looks, I think it looks like cowhide. Um, so I guess I like taking little parts from Scotland and being able to incorporate it into something that many Scottish people can identify and relate to. As I've gone through the journey of learning um, pottery and as you do that, you sort of pick up your own sort of techniques and styles and interests. So I've been working on a range that are called tit for tat mugs, um, which are essentially mugs with two breasts on them, um, which everyone loves and they find so much fun. And I greatly enjoy making them and being able to incorporate different kind of body shapes and types. Caitlin's style developed quite quickly and then they sort of developed a rather more female slant which I don't take so much part in. He's had some great input into you know ensuring that they're the best that they can be. This one's furnace. Yeah, um, but he very much leaves it up to me to, um, to do it. So the process of pottery involves various number of steps which many people don't necessarily know of. What we do is you get basically um, a ball of clay and you're able to throw it and throwing um, basically means your, your shape so you throw the, the clay this then is left to dry and when it dries you're able to kind of shape it into whatever way you want you're able to kind of smooth off the edges and this goes into a kiln which is essentially a big oven and this fires the kind of dried out clay and this is called bisque ware. So once you've got your bisque ware, you then want to glaze it and glaze is essentially that kind of shiny colour on any mug um, and we glaze it using essentially sort of paint um, and we put that back into the kiln again to then fire up and during this firing the temperature reaches like 1400 and melts that paint to create that shiny texture that you see um, on your normal mugs and that's the finished product but this is over a couple of days. With lockdown it's all changed so I've really got to know Caitlin as a grown-up person working down in the cellar she's got her own views she 
takes control and responsibility. Ooh, that's Andrew Fayou. I think I've been quite fortunate to be with her and, and experience that, the change in, in her from having gone to university and now come back as a grown up responsible woman. I didn't want my dad's skills to disappear with them. Um, hopefully there'll be a good few years left, but um, I thought this is the opportunity. I might as well just grab it with both hands. I've been looking at classes in Dundee for ceramics and I thought, why am I wanting to spend this money when I've got my own teacher back at home? This is something dad used to do and now I've learned to do and we've been like Dad said, very lucky to continue that and also be able to open up a shop and sell what we make for fun. Like, who can ask for something better?